What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another MWZ video. In this one, I'm going to be going over and explaining how the Pack-A-Punch upgrade system works in MWZ. This is a topic I've had a few requests to do, as it seems to be the most common way people like to upgrade their firepower in the game. Just like in previous videos, I'm going to show you what each of the tier of Pack-A-Punch does for your weapons, as well as some of the other benefits that it offers. While at first glance it may seem like a simple upgrade similar to weapon rarity, the Pack-A-Punch upgrade is much more complex. With that being said, you might discover something new about the Pack-A-Punch in this video that you might not have known about before. And if you do, please leave a like or comment about what you've learned or you still have a question about. Anyways, the talk is cheap, but this premium Zombies game wasn't, so uh, let's get into this popular upgrade. The Pack-A-Punch upgrade is actually an upgrade that is nearly as old as the Zombies mode in Call of Duty is itself. It first appeared in 2009 in Darius on World of War, and has been in almost every single Zombies map and mode since then. It has stayed relatively the same over the past 15 years, but changed more significantly in Cold War, where it was broken down into three separate tiers of upgrade. And since then, we've had the same system available from the iconic Pack-A-Punch machine, which has made its way back into MWZ. However, the overall function of the machine has changed some. We lost the ability to buy the different ammo mods via the machine, as well as the ability to upgrade to Tier 3 at all of the machines in MWZ. This ability is somewhat present, but you are limited to what tier you can upgrade to by the tier of the threat zone which the machine is found in. Interestingly though, you can go from no upgrade to tier 3 Pack-A-Punch at a machine located in the high threat zone. However, you still must upgrade to tier 1 and 2 first before getting a tier 3 finally. The pricing on each tier is also different from Cold War, with tier 1 requiring 5,000 essence still, tier 2 only requiring 10,000 essence instead of 15,000, and tier 3 only requiring 15,000 essence instead of 30,000 now. The unique Pack-A-Punch camos are also a returning feature in MWC, with each tier of upgrade having a slightly altered version based on which one you currently have. And as mentioned in my Forgotten Features video, you can retain any of your custom camos after upgrading by meleeing the machine first before purchasing the upgrade. So just like I've done in my previous videos about game mechanics in MWZ, I used in-game testing to find out what I needed to know and then showed the video clips to back my findings. This is the only way I can test and explore the various mechanics of MWZ without having access to the source code to show the hard data of everything. But I do try to eliminate as many variables as I can to make sure the numbers I figure up from my in-game testing are pretty consistent and can be at least replicated by others if needed. One of the first ways that I do that is by choosing a weapon that I know the damage and range values for and using it for all of my testing. The weapon I chose to use for testing the Pack-A-Punch upgrade was the Boss P SMG. This gun deals 30 HP damage per shot to the body with an effective damage range of 16.3 meters, meaning to get that 30 HP damage per shot, I would have to shoot the zombies within that minimum distance. I used the base version with no attachments or camos applied to make sure that there was no unexpected changes to the damage profile of this gun. Part of the reason that I chose the Boss P was its nice even damage values for body shots, and the other reason was because it deals relatively low damage compared to other weapons in the game. And the reason that I picked a lower damage weapon for testing is that unsurprisingly the Pack-A-Punch upgrade can significantly increase the damage output and I wanted to be able to test this increase on zombies all within the same tier area. To start off, I went out to shoot a few zombies with a completely unupgraded weapon first to see about how much damage it was dealing. As you can see in these clips of some tier 1 zombies, the Boss P does an okay amount of damage for an SMG. But that changes quickly against tier 2 zombies, as a single shot from this base version of the gun does almost nothing. This is mostly because these zombies have roughly 10 times the amount of health that a tier 1 zombie has, meaning that this gun is roughly 10 times less effective as well. Now comes when we start to see some of the benefits of the Pack-A-Punch upgrade. 
I have upgraded the boss P to the Bad Asphyxiator, which does several things for it. First off, you'll notice the distinct camo that it receives as part of the upgrade. You'll also notice that the magazine capacity has doubled, with also quite a noticeable increase to reserve ammo as well. And then taking this up against tier 1 zombies, you'll also notice it does take away more of their health bar per shot than an unupgraded version did, indicating an increase to damage as well. Although against the tier 2 zombies, there seems to be much less of an increase, but still more damage is being dealt. When I compare the health bars from the unupgraded to Pack-a-Punch tier 1, you can see a difference of the zombies health loss is about doubled meaning that the damage is likely now 60 HP per shot to the body instead of only 30 HP. However, when you upgrade to Pack-a-Punch Tier 2, the only new thing you'll notice initially about your weapon will be the new version of the camo. But this isn't all you've received. Your weapon has again had its damage increased. As you can see, the Bad Asphyxiator is doing significant damage per shot to Tier 1 zombies now. And against tier 2 zombies, it seems to be doing a noticeable amount of damage now, even comparing it to just the Pack-a-Punch tier 1 upgrade. Comparing the health bars again, it seems that we have doubled the damage of each shot again also, meaning that the Bad Asphyxiator is now doing 120 HP damage per body shot, instead of only 60 HP damage with Pack-a-Punch tier 1. Now finally for the highest tier of Pack-a-Punch you can buy, Tier 3. Once again, upgrading to this tier only applies a new version of the camo and gives another damage increase as well. However, now the damage output is so great that the Bad Asphyxiator instantly kills Tier 1 zombies, no matter which part of their body you hit them in. Meaning that with a Tier 3 Pack-a-Punch on this gun, it is dealing greater than 160 HP damage per shot, which is the health amount for unarmored tier 1 zombies. But it isn't a one shot against tier 2 zombies, although it does do a significant amount of damage to them compared to its normal unupgraded form. When I compared the health bars of tier 2 zombies after being shot with tier 2 and tier 3 Pack-a-Punch, you again see a difference in their health loss is about double. Meaning that the Bad Asphyxiator at Tier 3 Pack-a-Punch deals 240 HP damage per body shot, compared to only 120 HP of the Tier 2 Pack-a-Punch upgrade. It is very interesting to see how much of a damage increase we received from each tier of Pack-a-Punch and how each one compares to the others. While doubling damage which each tier sounds kind of weak and not very good, it actually ends up being an exponential increase over an unupgraded weapon. The normal boss P only deals 30 HP damage per shot, while a Pack-a-Punch tier 3 boss P deals 240 HP per shot. This is actually a total increase of 8 times the normal base damage, which if this applies to all weapons with Pack-a-Punch, then this can be a serious increase to your firepower, especially considering that you can apply weapon rarities on top of this, which increase damage with each level as well. But wait, there's more! Some weapons in MWZ gain an additional and somewhat unique benefits when Pack-a-Punched. Most of these are usually applied with the Pack-a-Punch Tier 1 upgrade, and give certain weapons extra or unique traits. Some of these unique benefits include converting the M16 from burst fire to fully automatic, converting the crossbow to full auto and giving it a 3 bolt magazine capacity, converting the Expedite 12 shotgun to full auto, giving some weapons that are reloaded one bullet at a time the ability to load two shots per one actually reloaded, and more depending on the weapon and what attachments are on that weapon. 
Despite Pack-a-Punch traditionally being an upgrade that gives unique benefits and damage increases to all weapons in previous games, the changes that it gives in MWZ seem to be the same across almost all weapons in the game currently. And even if there is unique benefits or damage increases, they are most likely only found when upgrading to Tier 1 Pack-a-Punch. Tiers 2 and 3 seem to only apply the different versions of the Pack-a-Punch camo and just double your damage output with each tier. Anyways, that's everything I've got for y'all on the Pack-a-Punch upgrade system for now. It's very unlikely that anything will change with this, especially given that MWZ seems to be in a state of being forgotten and that it's not going to be receiving very many updates or very many new features anytime soon. But hopefully you all found this video to be helpful in understanding how the Pack-a-Bunch upgrades work now. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.